Yeah, I make games, and I'm your host, Mizzizizz, with co-hosts Brogan Hackett and Adam Pipe, and this week we're joined by Stuff Wombat, a.k.a. Josh. What do you do? Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh, damn it, I messed it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I make games. They forced me to say this. <laughs> All right, who's starting? Questions. That's it. We don't. We don't have a. We don't have an intro period where we go like, oh yeah. So today I saw a cat or something. Don't you want to be relatable? You want to talk know. about I, a cat? I don't know. I didn't see <laughs> Did a cat see today. A cat? <laughs> no, sadly not. <laughs> I saw I a cat, a cat but it's the same cat that I see every day. So. I mean, that's still noteworthy. I think. N- none of us really have lives outside of this, so. We don't really have anything else to talk about. Okay, okay, yeah, sorry. I, I, I don't know. This is like I, I didn't get to listen to the first episode, so maybe I'm, I'm no, doing no, a completely fine. wrong thing here. This, this, is, a, <laughs> this is funny. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, so I guess Adam's asking the first question then. Oh, okay. All right. Um, first act. Um, well, I already screwed up my first word. Okay, um, first question. Um, so, okay, I, I, I know one but um, Josh a bit. Um, and I know he makes games, like, super, super fast. Um, like, you often do, like, games in an hour, which is kind of crazy to me. I can pro- probably never do that. So but I guess my question to you is, like, what is, like, your workflow? How do you do games so fast? Uh, you do it for like five years all the time and that's all you do and then you know is that the secret sauce (laughs) yeah the secret sauce is a sadness and a laptop Um, just never not be making games right no i mean it was definitely obsessive for me for some time and out of that period i've like taken uh skills Mm -hmm. um which is like probably not the best way to gain those skills because they're like very connected to a very sad time in my life yeah so that's not cool but yeah it's just the like i know my engine really well i have like shortcuts and i have like my own workflows that i just cannot describe to you because they're kind of natural Mm -hmm. it's it's this Mm -hmm. thing where yeah if you i don't know if you juggle a lot you cannot really describe how you're juggling you're just doing it and it seems kind of insane that someone would ask you like how does it work well i think i think it's probably the same for a lot of like self-taught i I presume you're self-taught right uh yeah yeah internet raised me Mm. yeah it's uh it's probably the same for a lot of self-taught game developers where they just like put a bunch of effort in to learn and like spent spent all that time just like making games and not really doing much else Mm. Um, yeah that makes sense I definitely relate to that. I, I've had like obsessive periods in the past where I'd like nothing go. My life wasn't that great. So I would just like throw myself into this. Yeah. With the hopes like that spe- I would fix all my problems, you know. Especially when I couldn't really like afford to buy new games online or whatever. I would just be like, I don't have anything to play. So I might as well make something. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. So you could say your mental health is directly related to how little you work on a game. <laughs> uh, sorry, how fast I work on a game, or no, how, how little you're working on a game. Um, I, I again, sorry, I didn't understand. So it's, it's, just, it's, it's like if, if if you have a if you're working on a game a bunch, your mental health is really bad. But if you're working on games very little, your mental health is probably a bit better. <laughs> yeah i don't know it's always tough to like do like like compare that directly yeah i also want to just like be clear again like if everyone here is like yeah no i got good at making games by being very sad like that's not the only way that's like a horrible (laughs) way to do that that is 100 percent not the only way and it's probably the worst way (laughs) yeah it's it's, it doesn't mean that uh we haven't all done a bit of it but yeah (laughs) maybe it's the easiest way where you like instead of um, trying to get better, you just disappear into this fictional world of game development. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know if it's actually easy either. I'd say it's a lot harder in a lot of ways. 
I, I mean, it's it's the easiest action you like for me. Like, okay, I cannot speak generally, but for me, it was like, yeah, okay, so I could try to understand why I'm sad, or I could just make the funny character go bleep, you know? Yeah, it's a very easy decision. <laughs> like, one is very mm-hmm. short term. It's kind of like drinking or something. <laughs> mm. Another trick for making games very quickly is to put very little in them, which is something I do. <laughs> That's my answer to the question. Make very small games with very little in them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. How do I make games fast? I guess during a jam, I just work 12 hours straight. <laughs> yeah. Doing like- and also oh, stream true. it. Because if you stream it, then you feel like you have to constantly work on super big things and like mm. talk about everything you're doing, which just puts you in this super hardworking sort of flow which yeah, is interesting I, I would think it's yeah. like the opposite you know because you're constantly having to explain everything you're doing so you're kind of slow you know well i, I find it helps to debug oh, sorry go ahead i find it helps to uh like debug and not make bugs and stuff like that because people will call oh, it out shit. or because you're explaining it you'll notice right away wait that won't work i find uh like when i was recording for the four devs one art kit uh video i did with Miz, um i was I, re- I recorded basically everything I did for that, and I wasn't I wasn't doing commentary like, but I was just recording, making sure I had the whole workflow documented, um, and that actually helped me a lot because I knew, even even though I could have just like taken a bunch of breaks, I didn't because I knew I was recording, and it would be a pain mm-hmm. to just like pick out the bits where I was scrolling on Twitter and pick out the bits where I wasn't. Mm-hmm. So this is the bad practice podcast. Where we're like, <laughs> <basically>. <laughs> the where trick we're like to making surveillance. The trick to making games fast is to feel bad, make small games, and do uh, do it all while you feel watched. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Good. So That's maybe like, uh, like every coder that worked on Cyberpunk had like ten people looking at their screens, <laughs> telling if they saw bugs. Then maybe it would, wouldn't have any bugs. Well, no, that's the I, I, thing. I, I, they uh, put very little into like the AI and stuff, so they got one, it done quickly. I have one. Like I have I one saying. request. I have one request. Let's not talk about cyberpunk. I don't yeah, let's not talk about cyberpunk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. It's just uh, too easy to go for. Yeah. You know? um. Hmm. Um. It's it's kind of like when I recorded because I think we all did the uh, four devs one art kit uh, thing with Mrs. Um mm-hmm. It's it's funny you say you recorded yourself through the whole time. Like I cannot do that. My computer is too bad. <laughs> if I like record my screen, I can't use my engine. So, <laughs> like I, I I had this idea like oh yeah I'm gonna every time I implement like a feature or something I'm gonna make a short recording and showcase that. And what happened was I made one feature, made one recording, and then finished the game, and then made another <laughs> recording. <laughs> yeah. was, I was like working on the videos, like, oh no. Yeah, no, I'm I'm definitely lucky. I was able to record the whole time, and it was it was much more hassle editing my part together, but it was yeah cool, and I liked how it turned out. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, when I, when I was recording, it, it was like the first time I was actually aware of how long I was working on something, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Normally, like, you never time it or anything. Yeah. Oh, really? I constantly time myself. Ah, really? fuck off. Sorry, forgot to turn off my phone. No. Um, I'll, 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 I'll just repeat the sentence I was starting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. What I was saying was I yeah I I constantly time myself like um, like paper or Adam said before where it's like okay I'm I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna make a prototype in fifteen minutes I'm gonna make a prototype in one hour like to really have that like game jam time constraint um, on myself which which helps me to like keep stuff focused mm. so it's it's like a very big part of my workflow is probably also timing myself like seeing how long something takes mm. and comparing that to how long i think it will take and stuff mm. that makes sense i i think i i tried this thing once where you like you set a timer for like 15 minutes or something and then you work on something and then you take like a break for five minutes but because you're like timing it 
you're like mm. hyper aware of the fact that you have to work for 15 minutes yeah and it really did like help with like productivity i feel that's but like it's also the, super stressful you know so that's like the pomodoro the method time. right mm-hmm. sorry what that's like the pomodoro method yeah the pomodoro yeah um mm. i actually use uh i use something for that called forest which is like it's basically a timer where it blocks out um, all the websites I get distracted by where, when, while I'm while I have the uh, timer running, and I do it in like sixty minute chunks, and that's actually how I like because I was I was running low on energy towards the end of that uh, four devs video, um, and so I just like forced myself to do like however many of those timers I had left on the forty eight hour time limit. Yeah. Yeah. It is nice to time yourself. Yeah. All right, Wamba, you want to go with a question? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, let me look it up. Badoom, badoom. So should I ask one of mine or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, sorry, touched the microphone. Okay, so what do you think about copyright? I think it's copy wrong. <laughs> <gasps> oh snap! I mean, it's kind Dwight. of a pain if you're like working with assets you find online. It's always like I don't know if this is actually open, like uh, public domain or whatever. Like they could have just marked it mm. wrong. It's like I just want to use the sound effect. And yeah, just, it'd be really nice if like like Kenny, right? He just makes everything public domain. It's like you know you can trust his stuff, and it's like it'd be nice if there's just a big like trusted repository instead of something like open they're, they're, like open game art that's not trusted whoops <laughs> <laughs> i mean there's definitely i found stuff on there that was definitely not the license that it said it was so i mm. always try to be careful um yeah i think i think copyright is fine um but i do think like i think it's messed up how like say in america they've just like over the last hundred years, they've extended the length that copyright applies for like another fifty years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's the Mickey Mouse. A law. lot of that is just so Mickey Mouse doesn't get like open it into the public domain, which is kind of just like really garbage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think yeah, I, like, it's, it's, there's, it's there's really, should... I don't know because copyright used to be really really short. Like I think it was like twenty years after something was made and it was public domain. And it just kept getting longer and longer. And it really sucks because, like, the stuff that that's getting out of copyright, like, for example, this year, is stuff from, like, 1924 or something, mm. which is, like, even before, like, actual movies are starting to happen. So there's, like, absolutely nothing. Mm-hmm. And it's so annoying. I think, um, um, yeah, um, it, I I, I know, it's kind of annoying, but uh, I... I, I like doing, like, games with really, like, obscure assets, you know, doing, mm-hmm. like, pictures that people take, because if, I feel, I don't know, I feel like the assets are, like, more real or something, but it's, it's really annoying, because, like, a lot of people just never mark, you know, if, if you take, like, a picture of um, a lamp in your house and you put it on the internet, you never think to, like, mark if it's open for use or whatever. Yeah. yeah. But, um, I really do like, um, because, um, a game was doing recently i really for the first time had to like actually think about oh is this copyrighted or not and then <laughs> um <laughs> using um like wikimedia which is like the mm. image and sound repository of like wikipedia and it has so much really weird stuff in a public domain which is yeah. really cool actually yeah, yeah so i, I feel like that. a lot of the you know like open game art stuff it's like too um too made for games you know yeah so like yeah have, in every game, hitting like something metal will sound the same, you know. My approach mm-hmm. to avoiding copyright issues when I was making uh, my game for the Dread X Collection Tree, Bubbo, was just to make everything myself and burn myself mm-hmm. out really badly. <laughs> and I <laughs> used like the there were only two assets I used that weren't made by me, or well, actually, there, there were two art assets and like maybe two code assets that I didn't make in the whole project. <laughs> Um, so you really were like went out and t- took pictures of like rocks and stuff. Well, it was it was like a N sixty four cartoony platformer, so I did a bunch of hand painted textures in GIMP. 
Mm, okay, that makes yeah. sense. Like, just, just imagine if, like, this year all the Half-Life assets were in the public domain. Oh, okay. Like, including oh, the sound effects and the music. That would be incredible, like, yeah. Holy fuck. There's so much creativity that gets killed because of this stuff. It's really mm. insane. Yeah. I think, uh... I think, like, copyright should maximum be 30 years before it goes into the public domain. Mm. You. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm for like five years like how long are you gonna sell how long are you gonna sell your Harry Potter pillowcases you know like who, who the fuck cares yeah I think maybe it should just be like um, you just get like um, a letter from the government every like five years like do you still really want this not to be public domain oh, or something oh yeah and well, like then make, no, make the paperwork has... a lot of work so like most people will never try to file for not public domain um, yeah, just I guess. Cool. Yeah, but then you're just building a then you're just building a perfect niche for like businesses that handle copyright renewal or whatever, <laughs> and yeah, you you just be giving like people money to That's extend your true. copyright for you, and only the people who had money could do that. So all of yeah. the stuff made by poorer people would be open, uh, be a uh, public licensed and. All of this stuff made by rich people would be um, impossible to use. Making mm. any government process uh, yeah. intentionally hard to do will uh, lead to me kicking in your door and like <laughs> doing something bad to your toothbrush. Maybe <laughs> uh, fuck, fuck forms. <laughs> maybe instead <laughs> fuck filling of out a, stuff. a time thing, it should be a profit thing where every like everything mm. gets a good run at like I don't know. A million or whatever and if something makes a million it goes into the public domain oh yeah mm. i thought it's it kind of hard yeah, to be judge strong. because that that stuff is like highly like dependent on production cost right yeah mm. like, but if it's like if it makes like 500 percent of you know the yeah songs, then then you um, get just people who are going to cheat the um budgets of their stuff and we're going to get even more yeah. inaccurate yeah. budget reports mm. Hey, maybe, I think maybe, really maybe the, the artists who work at big companies will get paid better, better that way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, now we're dreaming. <laughs> Copy, <laughs> real copyright for five years is possible, but artists at big companies minutes. being paid? No. <laughs> it, it would be nice, though, to be able to like live long enough to you know, see games get made with like David Bowie or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that would be cool. <laughs> Oh, the Tupac hologram could also <laughs> become public domain. Damn it. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, I wait. feel like they're just going to keep extending it so like the actual mark where like media that's still around is, you know, that that's still safe. Because like everything before nineteen thirty, I mean there are like a bunch of classic films for sure. But like I feel like once you hit like nineteen forty, there's like a lot of media that starts to, you know. But uh, I feel like they're, they're always going to extend it so it never goes beyond 1940. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think the thing is, like, it's either going to reach a point where copyright is just infinite, or mm. it's going to reach a point where it's ridiculous and, like... It is ridiculous already. Yeah, well, I mean, it's ridiculous <laughs> already, where it's, like, even more ridiculous, and, like, it's clearly something that people will, like, take action against. Mm-hmm. I still think it should be just when people, like the day they die, just everything goes public domain. Um, and it makes most sense to me, I don't know. Yeah, then we could start murdering people who created <laughs> things we want to yeah, use. Yeah, that's going to create that's a good. lot of assassinations. That's, I mean, it strengthens the economy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what is this podcast? Like, uh, <laughs> people who will be in jail five years from now? <laughs> <laughs> On that note, maybe we should move on to the next question. <laughs> but I, I think we can all agree that copyright is bad and Disney should uh, explode so we can all use Mickey Mouse twerking. Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mickey Mouse <laughs> doing the Fortnite dance. Oh, sh oh, the possibilities are literally <laughs> endless. Okay, so uh, now we're on to my question, which is, um, what is one thing that you can do while making a game that just always makes it more fun to play while you're testing? Oh, while you're testing. Well, while you're testing, the, the or player. just in, in the end result. Like, just something that makes your game more fun, and it's guaranteed to do that every time you make a game with it. 
Yeah. I I have an answer, but it's uh yeah. I'd I'd like to hear everyone else's thoughts. Okay, my my answer is just make it squishy. That that mm. helps. I think that's enough to be honest. Um, maybe this is just like personal taste, but if it was just like a game that was a button and it squishes every time you press on it, that would be enough game for me. So <laughs> that that game already exists. Uh, Jonas Tyrola made a twenty minute video. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was good. That was a good game. Though. That was a pretty cool video. Um, well, I, my fun go-tos, um, have you noticed, have you ever played ping pong and like taking the paddle and just kind of tap the ball in place? Yeah. Yeah. It's like weirdly engaging, right? There's like something about it, just tapping the ball. And I think it's just part of like hand-eye coordination. If you like, you know, catch a ball, there's something like satisfying about throwing and catching a ball. And I, my mm. theory is that when we're kids, when we're first born, we have really terrible hand-eye coordination, but we kind of need it to be good for survival. So our brains reward us for doing things with hand-eye coordination, which you right. know, practices that. So if you want to make a game fun, you just have to put something with like some kind of simple hand-eye coordination, you know, repetitive right. task, and your brain automatically is just wired to reward that with like dopamine or something. That's kind of like mm. my quick fun tip. Wow, that's a, that's actually a really interesting point because it's it's definitely true from what I've seen. Like the moment you add something where there's that there's that gap yeah. between what's happening and what the player has to do to keep it happening, it uh it instantly becomes like more engaging. Mm. Uh, I, I, I I disagree. Really like the, oh sorry. Uh, I, 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 I mean, yeah, maybe our, we get the dopamine for like getting better at hand-eye coordination, but I think it's a much more, uh, it's a much bigger underlying principle of like when you give away control of something, uh, it's scary, like in any context, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when you then regain control of that, uh, you feel satisfied in a sort of relation to how scary it was. Um, so, like, that applies to the ping pong ball, but that also applies to a strategy like StarCraft 2, where you're kind of throwing the ball by sending your workers to specific resources, and then maybe you catch the ball 20 minutes later when those resources make you win the game. So, mm -hmm. like, to limit it to hand-eye coordination, I think, is a, is a limitation. Uh, it, but, yeah, I, yeah. That, like, yeah. This, mm -hmm. this, like, moment of, like, now you cannot go back. Now your control is taken away from you, but you can prepare that moment... Um, if you can prepare that moment like sufficiently, then catching the ball or like seeing your strategy pay off is gonna feel better. And mm -hmm. yeah, hmm. but that's yeah. That, that, that that goes to like basically the core of like play or like yeah. game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I always find like that kind of stuff really like scary. Just like people, you have so many. You know, I don't know if you like sometimes when you go to conventions, there's there's always like this one business guy going to like this is like exactly how to you know control your player make them like your perfect slave and <laughs> if you you know it's like the ultimate dopamine machine you know mm -hmm. um and it's kind of like a, a kind of scary concept for making games yeah kind of, you know it's like that had yeah. to turn people into money basically but, yeah, but, but you 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 described just that before <clears throat> as your go-to to make yeah. games more fun. Of course, but <laughs> it's because I'm I'm a stupid human being who's like you know if a thing goes squish, I'm happy. I'll pay an extra dollar. You know, um, <laughs> <laughs> it works for me. I think AAA games aren't squishy enough anyway. That's true. Yeah, but that's I feel that's like because. Being squishy is uh, just a lazy version of user interface design or like user experience design. <laughs> yeah, it's just it a cheap version I, I of feel a like highly sophisticated like, craft. Yeah, I feel like juice in general, it's like um, the better like an indie dev you are, like the more juice you have. And then when you're like a really serious studio, like the juice goes down again. And it's like, I, I, you almost never see like a AAA game with screen shake because <laughs> it's almost like classy not to use it. You know, at that mm. point. No, it's because it's not needed. Uh, screen yeah. like okay, so we're we're getting into self-made theory territory now. Okay. Uh, I'm 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 a believer in a theory that I made up, which is uh, about visual noise, which means that like which plugs into the idea that our brain is made up to understand 3D space constantly, all the mm. fucking time. Like every second, um, we're analyzing a lot of like depth information when we're just looking at a tree, for example. Um, and that depth information and that like visual busyness is missing when you're playing a 2D game. 
So to mm. like make you have to make stuff artificially messy for this lizard part of the brain to be engaged. Mm. Um, and th that that falls away when you're making 3D games because you just have that depth possession uh, perception in there already. Yeah, that's um, true. That, that's definitely like the biggest appeal for me um, to do like 3D games because you can just do like a box in an empty room and it's st it'll still look better than most 2D games, you know? Yeah. yeah. Hey, <laughs> what the fuck, dude? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. There's just like something really visceral about like perspective and it's like correct and like yeah. you put a light and the light just is correct. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's that's there, that's in 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 my system. That's uh, I, I call that like visual noise, but it's actually a bad word, probably. Mm. Mm. Yeah, there there is a lot to be said for like three D being much more like inherently like it makes a lot more sense to us than two D. Mm. Um, and so for two D, like the more juice you add, the more like exaggerated everything gets, and the more fun things seem to feel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and at the yeah, end, of and that, I feel like you know, like juice in 2D games is kind of approach starting to approach being 3D, you know, like parallax and stuff. It's just mm, like yeah. ways to make your 2D more like 3D, you know. But the, the the important thing is that at the end of the 2D screen shake juice road uh, is a slot machine. Like that's the ultimate, uh, <laughs> exactly. the ultimate version of juice is a machine that's designed to steal your money. Yeah, and they, those people have figured that stuff out. I like think slot machines don't have enough screen shake, though. Sorry, <laughs> I think slot machines don't have enough screen shake. Have, have you have you played one? <laughs> That's my they, hot take. They shake, they shake a lot actually, and like rumble and like really? stuff. It's really? pretty. I haven't done much yeah, slot like, machines, so I don't. I, know I, I me 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 neither. But like, I grew up in a district where there was a big like carnival constantly going on, basically. Mm. And they have like <clears throat> a lot of slot machines and stuff, and I never played them. But when you go buy them, they are like uh, super haptic and responsive, and a lot of them yeah, are about like physical yeah. objects moving through the machine and stuff like that. Yeah. It's very spooky. In a, in Belgium, like um, gambling is really restricted, and there used to be like slot machines in bars, but uh, we don't have we haven't had that in like ten years or something. And uh, when I when I was in London, I, I saw one at a bar, and it was really honestly like distracting like i couldn't pay attention to the like the per person sitting in front of me because like somewhere in the distance there was like a sh slot machine just like yeah. making sounds and flashing and <laughs> it's <laughs> it really plays with your emotions almost it's crazy do you want to know what my answer to my question is um oh, yeah. what always makes sure. the yes. games funner when i'm working on them it's just literally just adding proper art in adding final art like mm -hmm. moving from prototype art to final art my game always just feels like a thousand times more fun and I, I get like a massive boost of motivation as soon as like a piece of art gets in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh, that's why I always start with the art in my games because then you have that <laughs> motivation before you start working. Yeah. yeah, I think I've mentioned in videos I always try to get art in early because it just mm -hmm. motivates me to see kind of the final product early on. It's not very fun to work yeah. on a game that's just like a capsule running yeah, around but that's, you know? that's that's how you get to the core of the game <laughs> i don't understand this approach i mean i understand it. it it feels good to put art in but like if 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 you are building something that's an abstract system why make it pretty because if you make a good system pretty it's going to be great but if you make a bad system pretty you're gonna like accept it uh, in the moment and I, like I not think, look at it I think so that clearly. has to do with kind of like the developer you are and like what you're trying to make because I feel if you're doing um, you know I think for me it's not always really that much about the gameplay it's more like how it looks and how it feels mm. and, and stuff yeah and, that makes sense and, you know um, it, I feel like it's you know because there's a lot of like the, the science behind like games and like the dopamine machines and whatever and stuff um, like I don't know if that's true for like every game because I mean you have like movies as well which is just like narrative stuff and I, I feel like you can do that in games as well I, I don't really like believe that every game has to you know be like a gameplay machine you know like a system um, sometimes no, just like no, a pretty um... picture and like um, a good enough reason is like enough for a game yeah, yeah. I, I, I agree. I'm just saying like if, if what you're like it's it's the idea of a screenplay, right? 
Mm. It's the idea of a first version. It's the idea of a sketch. And yeah. Yeah. if you like, like this is just it's personal taste. Like I'm not saying this is the way to do it, but adding art to something makes it harder to change it. And if it doesn't work in mm. the context of like here's three pretty paintings, and then you realize oh the second one is ugly. Um, mm. And you want to switch them around, but you already implemented the art and all of the like corridors between the paintings are painted and like 3D modeled and stuff, then you can't do that. And you kind of lock yourself in when you put in like production value. So I, I, I'm, a, I'm a strong believer in sketches and like scripts and prototypes and stuff like that. I think mm. it, uh, I think it also depends on how clear a mental image you have of your game. Like, Hmm. A lot of the time when I'm making games, and actually a lot of the games that I like the most are ones that I have like this clear mental image of before I start working on. Um, hmm. And I think like working to that image and it, building gameplay and art assets at the same time can uh, can avoid some of the issues where you're just like happy with the game because it's uh, be because it's got nice art and even if it doesn't feel great to play but uh i think i think also like i think you're definitely right where if you're if you're just setting out to make a game and you're not quite sure and you want to prototype a bit it's very good not to add art yet mm. but I, I think the opposite can be said as well you know like if you do your code first and then you put in the art and then you realize you know like it doesn't make sense aesthetically for that book mm. to be there or for this yeah. mechanic to be you know yeah. Um, yeah. It might work as like a game and stuff, but if it doesn't, you know, it, it doesn't make sense like from a layout, like a graphic design standpoint, for example, for this to be the way that it is, you know, then you kind of have to go back and then, yeah, that doesn't what, work. What, either, yeah. what what I was um, like, I'm not saying you shouldn't do art tests. I'm just saying you like you, you should you you shouldn't do shit. You can do whatever the fuck you want. <laughs> um, the way I. I'm trying to approach this is to be like, okay, so this is a gameplay prototype. This is a visual prototype. This is a narrative like system um, script. And mm. then you juggle all of these like pre-production things around and they evolve and evolve, but you don't put them together until you're convinced that each of them is going to work because otherwise you're going to lock yourself into um, directions that will then have like bad implications um later on which brings me to my answer to the question is like the one thing i can do to make a game more fun that i'm working on is to be very very clear about what i want this game to do uh mm. before mm. i before i type the first like line of code before i like even open my graphics program or whatever like be like okay so if i'm if i'm doing a ludum dare before the ludum dare i'm like sitting down i'm, I'm not meditating but it's like okay so what do i want Okay, and then I come to the conclusion, oh, I want to test this like idea for a story structure, and I also don't want to work a lot. So I'm saying, okay, <laughs> this is what I want, and that means I have to, like, I set aside one day for Ludum Dare, and not free. Yeah. And yeah. I will just do this, and then it's done, and it, it, it does, isn't perfect. But because I set those parameters, I can look at the game through my initial goals, and not through some soup of ideas where I'm like, yeah. oh, but here's... Yeah. Like, so, like... This like yeah like I'm I'm really like reading up on pre-production stuff, but I this guess, is yeah. So, sorry, I guess, I was just gonna say I guess that's very like the idea of like design pillars when you're making um, games that there should be like say three design pillars that are just core in your mind. Everything you're doing should hmm. ideally work towards one of those design pillars. Yeah, but it, it it doesn't even go like it doesn't stop at the stuff that's inside of the game. It's 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 like. Oh, I just want to have a nice weekend. Yeah, and yeah, that's yeah. one of the yeah. design well, pillars, I mean, like that, it's that, a that production a pillar, pillar or, right, or whatever. Yeah. yeah. So but that's I, that's that's I that's think... my magic formula mm. for making games that are mm. maybe not more fun, but that like I don't cry about <laughs> so much. <laughs> yeah, I see what you mean. Though I, I don't know. I feel like I'm the opposite. I, I feel like um, like pre-production kind of takes away the the intuition. You know of the process mm. you know i feel like if you if you if you were like if you just take the game as it is and you take one step at a time you can like discover stuff through your process you know and figure out what your game is is going to be by making it you know which i think is yeah. more interesting because you kind of tap into your subconscious a bit you know and you make stuff that you couldn't possibly like think of you know yeah um, but the... and i feel like yeah i don't know i feel like if you do like too much 
pre-production, you're kind of putting yourself in this cage of like your expectations, you know. Um, and I don't know. Yeah, it makes it makes sense. Like this this very. I did this for years, like this very intuitive thing where I sit down and I start, and then two days later I have something. Mm. Yeah. And I've grown dissatisfied with that. And pre-production doesn't mean that I sit down with like graph paper and a calculator mm -hmm. and calculate mm. like, oh, this game is going to be 3.5 fun, right? There's a yeah. lot of intuition going on. <laughs> it's it's just um, abstracted. Yeah. It's on yeah. a larger scale from my perspective. And that also makes it less personal and less like free form mm. but that's what i'm that's what i'm i'm looking for in my life less yeah. free yeah. form and like more yeah. mm. control I, I guess for me it's i, I do believe in pre-production but not as much in like um like writing stuff down and and planning it out but more like um thinking about it like actively and just like more like meditating on the idea rather than you know yeah. um planning it I, out, you know? I mean i have here a notebook um, for a project that is very much in pre-production right now and it's just a lot of like insane garbage that I write down while I think I have a good idea and because I write it down I can then look at it and be like oh this is very bad <laughs> right <laughs> it's not like I'm sitting down and I'm saying ah and then the system will look like this and then it looks like this it's it's just a starting off point where I can then like I don't, I don't know. One, I'm, I'm talking yeah, in a circle. Yeah. The one thing I would say against like pre-production that I found when I've done a lot of pre-production is that it's it makes it harder to scope down because you've in, yeah. in your mind you've had this part of the game that you should probably cut present in the design for much longer than you would have if you'd come up with it on the fly. Mm -hmm. It would be a lot easier to say if if that if that idea was like say two days old. You could you could cut it a lot easier than if it was like a month old. Yeah, true. And I also feel like I don't know. Every time you you spend like not working on the game is a kind of lost time. I don't know. That's that's, that's like crazy. writing a document is not a game, you know. And that's I crazy. Mean, it, it, I don't know. <laughs> it might be crazy, but it is to me. I don't know. Uh, I, <laughs> I, I I see the point. I, I think like game design documents or whatever they're really useful if you're working on something with multiple people as kind of like a communication method or something. But um, except for just like jotting down ideas, I don't really see what's the point of using it for yourself. <laughs> I, I don't know. I think it's a waste of time. But, uh, that's just like my opinion. <laughs> it's probably one. But um, yeah, it's a it's a valid opinion. Um, and yeah. I disagree with yeah. it. I think, uh, I think, as with all things, it's like a balance. You have to balance that um, having having this clear image in your head of a game versus leaving the space for new things to come up. Um, mm -hmm. And the, the more rigidly you plan out a game, mm -hmm. the harder it's going to be to make the game you've planned. So I, I think, like, my my approach has become like having. I always do the design pillars, and I do, like, goals as well. Um, and then I do a little bit of, like, gameplay planning. But I try not to plan too much of what's actually going to happen in the game. I, I wonder if it's actually because cause I do, um, like, formal educating, education and stuff for games, and they really start, they drill you into, like, make documents and, like, design pillars. And I guess I just, like, kind of hate that they made me do it. Or something. So maybe it's just like me rebelling against my education or something. I don't know. <laughs> That's fair. Well, I, I think we've probably talked a lot on this already. Mm. Um, so we should probably move I, on to like the next question. Unless there's I, like I, any I, last I, points. Yeah, I'd like to hear from Mitsitsits it's, it's about uh, how, how, how you like, uh, how do you plan your project? Because you're uh, also like, oh, sorry. Because project. you're not only planning projects, you're also like planning videos along with them, I guess, right? Yeah. Um, for me, it's like I get a cool idea for a game and then it sits in my head for like three years and just kind of evolves because I'm busy working on other stuff. And then it's like when I can finally work on it, I have like a pretty solid idea of what it's going to be just because it's been kind of baking there whenever I'm just idling around or doing whatever I just think about it. Um, but when I do decide to start working on it, I usually... I usually make a sketch. Um, 
I like to have more of a visual thing and maybe I'll make a couple notes, but I don't write up a lot on it because um, it's already in my head really. <laughs> and then mm-hmm. um, when I work, I, yeah, now that I've been, ever since I got into YouTube, I always like plan my development process around what's going to make a good video, which is kind of a weird way of approaching it. But it's like, I think of like one, what's like one core topic that I could talk about, about this game that would make an interesting video. And then I just work specifically on that and things that are around that. And then it, it gives me like a clear cut set of goals. Like right now I've got like the next three videos planned out for the game I'm working on. And then it's like, okay, so I'll work on this to make that video. Then I'll work on this to make the next video. Then I work on this to make the next video. And it's like, and then at that point, I'll have a vertical slice done to the game and I can put out a, a demo or something, mm. which yeah. so yeah. it's very it's, weird. It's kind of like, it's so, sorry, it's kind of like uh, milestones. Yeah. Um, yeah. Almost. That's interesting. And it also can evolve based on um, player feedback. Like it's the game I'm working on now has changed a bunch just from because I'll get like tons of I'll make something about a specific thing and I'll mention lots of stuff and then I'll get tons of comments from people who are like I really like this and I really like and you should add this and a lot of the ideas are terrible but some of them are pretty cool and it's like oh mm-hmm. I can add that you know just like having so many people see it um, just brings a lot of ideas and discussion that I think helps it evolve so I don't know how rigid my ideas are but um, it definitely opened to changing on suggestions and stuff, which is an interesting new thing compared to before I started doing YouTube. Mm. Mm. Have you ever had uh, like um, like a thing where everyone in your comments was saying the exact same thing that you should do, and you like totally thought it was the worst idea? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, oh, what was I'm trying to think? I mean, there's definitely a lot of people hate the name of my game right now, and I am thinking of changing it. <laughs> um, you so you're not or you are? I am. Okay, yeah, nice. <laughs> it's <laughs> fucking horrible. Like, I, 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 and I, I, I say this with a lot of love. It's really, really, um, yeah, hard to remember. <laughs> yeah, that was what like. I, I don't think it's hard to remember though. I, I still not again. I think now, now I'm scared of saying it because. I might be disremembering. Well, that's the thing yeah. is I also well, I think the made fact a game that you released, a similar what name. What was it? You, you release games with like very similar names to it now, which yeah. is, is a cool idea, but also now I can't remember whether it's that is the, that is that, that is the, <laughs> which one yeah. of those it is. Yeah, yeah, that that's something I never even thought of. I was just like, yeah, they're different. The, all the names are different. People <laughs> should remember them. <laughs> But people don't have case sensitive memories or whatever. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. Yeah, of sorry. What's... Oh yeah, were you gonna say? No, I, I was. I was just like interrupting and being rude about your game names. No, um, that's when you right. were. Like the the question was, um, yeah, like like how like like building on what Adam has asked, like how is your relationship with like the YouTube comment hive mind? Because the, they're like. There's a lot of like people who have interesting ideas about game design, but how much time do you spend like looking at that and like evaluating it? It it would kill me. I couldn't do that. <laughs> like, I mean, all I these see, people. I'll see like on my YouTube studio, all the comments come up, and I'll see a bunch of them, and it's just like in my head, I automatically filter it into like dumb idea or cool idea. And if it's a cool idea, I just think like, would that make the game like really a lot better? Like. For mm. example, I had this dumb idea that uh, I didn't want to do voice acting for the enemies, right? So I was like, what if they take some drug and that they find that makes them like talk like monkeys? They can't actually talk. They just screech. Then I don't have to do voice acting. And they, I just put like monkey screeches on them. That would be funny. And then mm-hmm. I mentioned that in the video and tons of people are like, you should be able to take it. You should be able to take that. And then also tons of people are like, it would be really nice if there was like a slow motion mechanic because it looks really fast paced and hard to aim and stuff. So I was like, well, all these people want this. What if I did add it in? What if I just made so you could slow down time and you could take this drug and it would slow down time? So I, I tried it out and it was like, immediately made the game way funner and i was like okay this is the right thing to do and then i polished it up and made it look really cool and added more stuff and it was more just like yeah it just was like it fit it was the right thing to do you know and but so yeah like, is 
so, sorry, follow up question again is so if you take the drug time slows down and when the time is slowed down, that's that makes the game a lot better. Is that what I understand or there's like restricting it, but just like it makes the game a lot cooler, like just seeing mm. your character like stab this needle in the arm and then time slows down and the audio gets distorted and you start shooting and there's like particles flying everywhere in slow motion. It just feels really awesome. And it's just like it just made the game cooler. And I was just like, this is the right thing. Yeah. But then like on the contrary, oh, another idea people have keep suggesting and wanting is that you should be able to change your limbs like you should be able to take your legs off and put somebody else's legs on. But I just think of that and it's like that's going to be a ton of work i'd have to make a bunch of new 3d models and mm. textures for the character i'd have to add in this yeah. whole new mechanical system and it just wouldn't really make the game that much better because it would just like whoa to make your you run a little faster and stuff like that like there's already mechanics in place for that and i think it just detracts from the core idea and so i'm just like i'm not doing that right so it would just be too much time investment for not enough reward yeah well i, I think one. we should Sorry, I was just gonna say I think we should probably move on to the next question now. Yes, yes I have, yes. I have. Yeah, no, let's let's talk later. Okay. Okay. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. So, uh, I think it's uh, Wombat's next question. Um. Okay. Have you ever considered making a porn game? So I actually made a meme page for game developer memes like five years ago. And that was one of the memes. <laughs> you know, you know the cat looking at the newspaper. Like I should buy a boat. It yep. was, it was that. But it's like I should make a porn game. And then I put like as the caption, I was like, I put a link to like the top paid Patreon projects, and all the games were porn <laughs> games. And I was like, look yeah. at this. <laughs> like I could make so much money. Yeah, I mean, it's very clearly a very profitable market to go into. But at the same time, like, <laughs> do you really want? your game development time to be put into that hmm. i think it's also like Unless... a, a dangerous market you know it's yeah i don't know you kind of have to hide it from some people if you do it and the fact that you have to hide anything is probably going to end up being like a big mess you know? that's yeah. that's that's what i think is so fascinating because like um it's kind of like real sex work in the regard of like public perception yeah <laughs> yeah where if 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 you start doing porn games you're like you in it's it's an interesting question for me like how much are you participating in like sex work and how much is that sex work digital and then if you like sell access to digital bodies of people like like th there's so much weird stuff in that area is really fascinating there is a mm -hmm. lot there uh that's really weird with like porn games with like consent i think yeah from yeah, from the little but... bit i've seen there's like the idea of the porn game is that is this fantasy where you don't have to like you you can interact with this uh person who you're attracted to without having to form a relationship in a lot of ways yep. Mm -hmm. yeah it's it's like the whoever is in the game is like fuckable and also wants to fuck you right yeah. like that yeah. that seems to be yeah. the core premise which is also like how normal porn works like um i think yeah that's true too mm -hmm. so but it, I, 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 it 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 is like it is a space where you can kind of like act out your fantasies i think without like attaching your like real body to it so of course the porn is going to be super fucked up like it's it's going to be the darkest like stuff that <laughs> nobody would want to film in real life is going to end up mm -hmm. in like uh that area but like just just the idea of making like a game that actually tries to like aim for not the like that tries to aim for a personal relationship, that tries to like mimic good sex is so fascinating to me. I've been thinking <laughs> about this for like literal years. And it's and it's yeah, it's uh it's something I might do at some point hmm. if I'm like ready to give up on my uh public image as a clean, <laughs> nice boy. I would be really interested wow. in seeing that. You could have already done it and we wouldn't know. Yeah, I'm the top Patreon this, guy. This is where you announce your, your, your first <laughs> debut for <board> game. <laughs> I would be really interested to see like that from you because I know you're actually like really good at making games. Because every time I've seen those in the past, they always just have like the most awkward, boring ass mechanics, and they're just like really terribly made, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And so it's just like 
I mean, obviously the art is the point in them, but it's just like, you know, could you actually do an effective yeah. game with that goal? Think, you know? think, I think, think there's think, not think, enough think the implications. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, for There's running. not enough screen shake in porn games. <laughs> no. <laughs> F- think think of the implications of making like gameplay that requires you to use both hands in a porn game it's <laughs> it's fascinating right because you're, you're like, there's this real world interaction with your own body that's so ah, there's so much cool shit have there seen, and i'm um, scared to do it <laughs> have you seen a chair fucking sim <laughs> What? Yeah, yeah. I, I feel like there was someone who wanted to make a porn game but didn't want to make a porn game and he just found like the ultimate like mediator <laughs> it's really weird oh my god I saw that on take source like 8 years ago or something yeah it, it released like recently what yeah <laughs> my answer anyway is that I've not ever really considered making a porn game um like it's just never appealed to me like even though i know there's a lot of money there and i i've seen like as you say like the top patreons and stuff Mm -hmm. like i'm I'm looking at where people are making money in games uh especially indie games and that's a big market but it's also just like something that i don't have any ideas for and i don't particularly feel drawn to doing it but i i think it's really interesting that I think a lot of people who do make porn games are actually, like, really into it, and I think that's actually kind of cool. Mm. Like, to make something that you're that passionate about. It's it's a, it's a kind of secret scene of game developers that, like, we, like, we as, like, uh, the indie community do not interact with. Yeah. There's, yeah. like, this whole group of people who are kind of, like, looked down upon, or kind of like ignored, like, yeah, just like real life sex workers. I'm not saying it's the same because it isn't, but there are similarities is really, yeah, it's a very interesting design space to me. And I'm, I, I keep thinking about it, not because I'm that interested in like animating, fucking or whatever, but just, the uh, yeah, the implications are wild and very like in, in a way much more direct than like shoot enemy five times. Mm-hmm. It's pretty fascinating. Yeah. I, I think it's also interesting every time I'm like on itch looking for new games to play or whatever and I'm looking at like the top recent games or whatever the highest rated games are always the porn games <laughs> like I think it's true yeah it's it's insane to me like I, I look at like top horror games and there's like four porn games in first row or whatever you know <laughs> oh there's horror porn games you, you think people don't find monsters hot? People find monsters oh, extremely yeah. hot, I'll have you know. Yeah, like like the the furry stuff, but with like Freddy Krueger or whatever. <laughs> um, I thought it was really interesting the comparison you made to sex work, because I've like mentioned that jokingly to friends before. Like It's like, yeah, you could become, you know, get into webcamming, but I could make porn games. <laughs> like, <laughs> if it all goes south, that's what we can do. <laughs> And like, yeah. I don't know, it just, yeah, the same way of like, you can't really tell your parents about it and like, and, but also lots of money. Also, it doesn't matter yeah, how old you are or what you look like. It's not going to affect that though. So I guess the new digital space, how is that going to affect sex work? What an interesting, you know, future we have. Yeah. I mean, you just have to think of VTubers and uh, yeah. the implications yeah. are insane. It's all, it's all like very, oh, I'm going to say the word cyberpunk. Yeah. I was thinking that <laughs> <laughs> when I saw it, I was like, oh, it's so cyberpunk. VTubers. So I don't yeah. know if you, if you saw the uh, image I just posted in discord there, but I, it's literally like the, the top selling hor- game tagged horror on itch.io <laughs> the cover of it has like this big titty girl on it <laughs> and it's yeah, very clearly girl. aiming at that like audience zombies the, the, the real horror is her back pain <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's some pretty uh pretty tough body horror <laughs> <laughs> yeah just imagining all the yoga she has to do to like stay alive it's a <laughs> grueling <laughs> All right, 
So my question, how would you implement health potions in an RPG? Because something I've noticed in lots of RPGs is they give you health potions, but it's kind of sparingly. And then they also give you like a rest mechanic or something where you can heal up outside of combat. So what happens is that players will go into a fight and then they'll be losing. And so instead of taking a health potion and continuing doing the fight, which would be the fun thing to do, they run away, hide, and then rest and heal and then go back to the fight, which is obviously not as enjoyable to the experience. And so how would you design that to uh, prioritize, make the player do the fun thing and not the not fun thing, right? I think mm. one thing that really helps uh, players actually to use the the health potions is to make it easy for them. So, like, to have a hotkey for it, or to pause time if you're mm. in your menu so they can take it. Um, but also, at that point, you want to give them lots so they don't have to worry too much about running out. But then, but then once they just then yeah, you run then you run into the issue where they just health spam. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it's really a question if if what you intend the person to do, like in 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 the example where you run home and like sleep and then come back, um, if that works, and you want to do it, you just do it. It's not like if you don't want to do it, you use a health potion, right? Like it's a uh, if you're trying to play like economical and like get the highest score and have the most health potions, mm -hmm. um, then that's your own fault that you're trying to do that, in my opinion. Like, if, if it's not fun for you, then why the fuck are you doing it? Because, I mean, I've noticed I do not fun things in games because it seems like the better way to win, right? It seems like I get yeah. in this mindset where, like, I need to do this. I need to do all these side quests. I need to do this, whatever, just because that's going to make it easier to win. That's going to give me the completion of status. But it's not fun for me to do those things. And, like, I, I don't know. I've heard in reviews and stuff where they'll talk about... I just feel like to win, I need to do this not fun thing. And so it's like, um, I don't know. It's like game mechanics that encourage people to not do the fun thing. And so mm. this is kind of the most obvious thing I could think of. is like you get consumables and then you don't use them because they're rare or you just don't feel encouraged to use them or something because you have an alternative that's not as fun, but it's, it's unlimited or something like that. Um, I, I, th I think the funnest thing to do is probably just make it easy to get the health potions and have lots of them because obviously people will probably like it more if the game is easy <laughs> <laughs> but um i mean look at like breath of the wild where you can just like, you can get food very easily and you can eat it at any time like just as you're about to die you can just eat food <clears throat> and people <throat> love that game so obviously it's i don't know it doesn't seem like a bad choice to me <laughs> uh one thing you can do is uh if you go home and rest that could just heal you, okay? But if you have health potions, you can give them buffs. You can have every health potion have, like, a little buff to just, mm. like, improve yourself after you take that as well. Um, then... And I, I think that's a, that's a way in which you can encourage people to use health potions and also make it so that if they need to use the health potions, if the challenge is that big, they get a little boost of uh, health to beat the challenge. But then they might feel like, I need to save these for a boss fight or something. Or something actually special, not just a regular fight. Well, then then, then again, like, that that uh, that works in tandem with, like, making making them easy to get. But maybe, uh, maybe limiting your carry capacity, obviously. Mm -hmm. yeah, it, it, it's, it's like how, how the health potions, like, are implemented should not be determined by the health potions themselves but by the larger systems that they interact with mm -hmm. so in in skyrim like you have these health potions that weigh almost nothing and you can also just eat food right like from the menu so you can mm. always kind of get yourself back up but it's much more uh efficient to like heal yourself with spells mm -hmm. so they have a health system like a healing system that's basically do whatever you want, and the only thing that can really, like, really, really kill you is something that does a lot of damage in one hit. Mm -hmm. um, so, they have that system, I suspect, like, I cannot uh, say with confidence, but they have that system because Skyrim is not really about, like, managing your health. It's about yeah. going around yeah. and exploring stuff. 
and Breath yeah, of the yeah, Wild yeah. is the same. It's not it's about nice. like having enough health points. They don't care. Like you shouldn't die because you like forgot to cook a, a meat or something. Um, whereas in Gothic Two, which is I think the best like RPG ever. Um, you can sleep to heal yourself, and you can't carry health potions. But to drink the health potion, you have to like open an in-game menu that doesn't pause the game. So while you're drinking the health potions, monsters can still attack you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And you can only sleep in beds. And if you're out in some dungeon, there's not going to be a bed there. So if you want to, mm -hmm. like, you can, you can, like, and that is why I love the game so much, is because it gives you these tools, and that it like the way it uses them simulates a real experience which is one where if you decide to go like to this dangerous place what you're going to do is you're going to stock up on health potions mm -hmm. you're going to do that before yeah. you go there because you know you're going to need them because there's not going to be a bed there because you can expect that because this is a simulation of a real physical space so like how to implement the health potion to sum my answer up depends on the like larger experience you want to mm -hmm. facilitate and not on some like generalized idea of fun in my opinion. Mm. Yeah, I think I think answer. something that illustrates that really well is uh I'm going to be very online game liker here and say uh Dark Souls and uh the From <laughs> Software games. Like they've they've <laughs> explored a lot of different mechanics around how health works and how your potions interact with that. And how resting interacts with that as well. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I think in Dark Souls it's designed so if you've rested you'll always have enough potions to hopefully get you to the next place where you can rest. Whereas in Bloodborne it's all about, it's it's more about digging into the combat and, and getting really aggressive with it. And you, you have renewable health potions but you can also regain your health if you lose some um, by attacking. Yeah. And it, it depends, like, you're very right, it depends on what experience you want the player to actually experience. Like, in, in Dark Souls, they kind of encourage that sword and board gameplay where you have your shield and your sword. And in Bloodborne, they encourage you to just have at, have at it and just, like, try and kill the monsters as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, funnily enough, like, I've, I've, I've recently watched a lot of, like, videos about Kingsfield, which is like um, the grand grandfather of Dark Souls of the mm. whole series, mm. where their health potion system is basically um, you will lose health if you fight an enemy. Like there's no way around that, and the only way to progress through the game is to look through every room for every little health potion that you can find, so that you can have enough health to survive the next encounter. Where it's mm. not so much about like combat skill, but more about like searching through every little nook and cranny of this space mm -hmm. which is like the gameplay for this game is super boring but yeah. uh, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> it's an it's an it's an interesting idea as well where it's not really that much related to your action in combat but more through your like action outside of combat yeah i've been seeing a mm. what's it half-life alex they apparently they emphasized like exploring to find ammo and health and stuff and apparently mm -hmm. that's a lot more fun in VR, so it's actually yeah. like a good mechanic in there. It's, it's they they probably emphasize this because they are using VR and they realized, oh shit, picking up boxes and throwing them around is fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, the trailer for the game literally opens with moving a box. I mean, oh really? <laughs> they know what they're about. <laughs> I guess uh, yeah. one system I would mention related to health potions that I liked was, I think it was Bastion and Hyper Light Drifter, the way, and they have a very combat focus and they have a, they just limit the amount you can carry, right? So it's like, you'll find them occasionally, but you can only carry X amount. So it's like, mm. it kind of encourages you to use it because if you find another one, you can't hoard them. It's just, well, I might as well use it now. And then they also auto use it when you're about to die. So it's just kind of like yeah. this. Um, I don't know, it, it it lends itself to more intense, like, just action-focused and using whatever you can. But, like, if, if, I, if I bring that system, like, to a point where I really suck at the game and I survive every encounter with just a few health points left, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to search around for health potions. Like, yeah. I'm going to, like, suddenly I have a reason to explore the space mm -hmm. because I need to or I'll die. 
So then you just have to make yeah. sure it's not a pain to explore. It's just like, okay, there's like five <laughs> boxes here in a couple rooms, and it's like really easy to open yeah. them or something, break them. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm currently like designing, pre-producing a game that will probably not have health potions, but some sort of similar thing. And our, like the way I imagine the game right now, which is not how it has to end up, um, is that it doesn't have like traditional health points. Instead, you'll have like a state, like you'll be sick. And if you're sick and you get like five damage, then you'll switch to wounded. But if mm. you're like healthy and you get five damage, nothing happens. Hmm. And suddenly, like like health point health potions are an abstracted idea, right? Like they don't exist yeah. in the real world because mm. they are like interacting with an abstracted idea of like health, <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. which yeah. is yeah. also something that is not just one variable that can go up and down. So I think there's a lot of like I think Far Cry did this with their addiction mechanic, where you like have to like shoot some stuff or something to like. Um, gain health points as well as like blurry vision or something like to get rid of the blurry vision Mm -hmm. and i think there's a lot of exciting stuff to like be like oh yeah so i have these bandages and if i apply them to my healthy leg nothing happens right like there's so much cool stuff that you could explore if you went away from the traditional 100 hit points system yeah Mm. But then also again, there's a reason that hundred health points, that hundred hit point system is there because everything else is super complicated and weird to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's a very easy concept to grasp for new players. Um, yeah, and it's also like a power fantasy thing where you're like, oh, I'm not a mortal being in a slowly decaying body. I am ninety nine hit points. <laughs> <laughs> it's much, it's much more permanent feeling. Mm-hmm. Oh man, I can't wait to see your next game though. It's gonna be cool. Oh, it's yeah. not gonna be the next game. It's gonna like this. This thing is gonna take a long time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing this game that you release in twenty years time. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> Your magnum opus. <laughs> uh, no, I'm, I'm I'm actually working on this with the team that uh, I also worked with on Ord. So mm-hmm. like, I'm, it's not my game. Like we we right, working right, right. as a group. So we move on to the final question then. Yeah. Uh, sure. Uh, it's it's one of mine. Yep. So, if you had to guess, what will be um, direction of the next new big game genre that everyone then tries to rip off? Like, if we're thinking back, like, oh, there was the MOBA concept, and there was Battle Royale, and Auto Jazz, and then the the zombie shooters, and Among Us, and all of that stuff. Like, what's going to be the next big thing? And drinking games. Drinking <laughs> games. <laughs> yeah, because everyone's gonna get vaccines, and then everyone is gonna do like nothing else but you know go out and get drunk. So <laughs> drinking games. <laughs> so we're, we're we're gonna do a like ancient Egypt revival of uh, game design. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the current big thing is Among Us. I feel like there's definitely gonna be more games ripping that off right now. But if I had to guess yeah, the next, I, hmm? uh, I mean, we're gonna see Among Us, clo- well, Among Us inspired games. Yeah, in the video game a, space for the next two years at least. There's going to be yeah. an Among Us Fortnite for sure. Among Us Battle Royale. Uh, They're already, Battle already, it's it's already in Fortnite. They already what? did that, yeah. What? <laughs> yeah, yeah, the Fortnite, Fortnite modders. Like, sorry, go, go on, sorry. Yeah. For, Fortnite got it very quick. What? I don't, yeah. Yeah, I don't play Fortnite. <laughs> um, if no, I had to guess, nor do it, I. the next thing is going to be probably multiplayer horror like Phasmophobia style considering that just blew up. And it's just this tiny indie game by like one person. Do, do, guess do, this, like, uh, this is this is slightly off topic, but like, what what do Among Us and Phasmophobia and Fall Guys, for that matter, have in common? Like, I I I think I have a very concrete answer that makes a lot of sense, but I'd, I'd be interested to hear other opinions. What do they have in common? Not combat based. Mm-hmm. Multiplayer non-combat. Yeah, that's basically it. Um, I think it's just like stuff you can do in your living room. But then, online. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm sorry for framing this as a question because I just want to say my answer. This is a <laughs> stupid <laughs> um, Sorry. Go for it. <laughs> um, it's because it's it's about sharing physical space with people. Yeah, exactly. And that mm. is what we are all missing. And it's just like hmm. talking about digital space as if it's real, 
is like like when we do a social like interaction like when we meet up with friends in a bar that mm. bar is going to have an effect on how we communicate with each other how we get That's to the sure. bar mm-hmm. like mm. it it feels to me like 90% of our communication as humans is about how we will go somewhere to meet who, who right it's yeah. like oh yeah no mark is late or like oh yeah let's go there or no there's bad whatever there's like a lot of communication is about physical space and these games mm. just have that they're all about that space so i think the next big trend is gonna like go even deeper into that to like touch even more of our social soul hmm. yeah that makes sense yeah josh you, so what you you're saying is that your like social space game already I, I, uh, what you're the, saying the, is that uh, VR chat is back on the rise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's like, going to be a bunch of horror games about pandemics being trapped inside where people make games <laughs> about their experience in the pandemic. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're like, that's going to be like next year's movie cycle or like game cycle Definitely. or whatever. I, um, I wonder if people will be like nostalgic about this. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, no. yeah af- af- after they have to play all the drinking games they'll be like oh i wish it was locked down again <laughs> <laughs> we should we have to see people oh. <laughs> well that'll be because they're hungover and they just do not want to go outside that's fair <laughs> well, we're doing our 10th party this week don't you want to hang out <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it would be funny if there was like a pandemic larp where everyone <laughs> dressed up in pajamas and stayed home. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Sorry, I, I, I sidetracked my own question. No, that's all right. Do you have an so answer to okay. your question? Do you have an idea what the next big thing is? That's what uh, mm. that's what Wombat was saying, right? Uh, was that the next big thing was going to be like the things that give you spaces to be in? in oh, right. Yeah, space. yeah. Um, but, but wouldn't you say that's like the current thing? Yeah, the next probably thing. the next big thing. Huh? Maybe like uh, I think Elsa the, I think the, is is gonna make a comeback. That therapy robot. Um, <laughs> oh, I thought you were talking from about the, from uh, the eighties or whatever. Yeah. Elsa games. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, true. There's a visual novel about that as well. Yeah. The uh, I don't know. Pre- it's, pregnant, it's impossible uh, to say. Uh, cartoon characters. What? The, have you not seen the pregnant cartoon character games? No, what? Oh yeah, that's really yeah. Oh, They're you mean like, like the same breed of like the you know, um, the, the weird like tail like, just like those weird like care games where you have like um, cartoon characters in really weird fucking situations. You mean and like kinda, like yeah, like talking Tom? Yeah. Mm. Like if like if we would have had a if we would have an answer to that we would uh, you know we could make some money that would be yeah. cool yeah we we probably wouldn't say it out loud here on a podcast <laughs> oh I see how it is <laughs> so you're all you already know the answers you're just not saying it yeah we're, so we're, we're all holding back steal it. no I'm I'm I'm, I'm, I'm just checking on my idea right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm just checking if any of you have figured it out and if I have to, like, send my lawyers to sue you before you can even start <laughs> developing. <laughs> I thought of making a Phasmophobia clone for fun. It would be different, obviously, but it seems like... You have, it, it's, like, an easy multiplayer thing to make because you don't have to do, like, latency compensation and all that. It's just kind of, like, make something where your friends hang out and, like, yeah. do simple tasks, you know? Let, let's 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 make first person sims and you're the sim like that would be so nice <laughs> <laughs> that'd just be real yeah. life but like with extra steps yeah but also like less you, back pain you, you can go out in the game you can like leave your house and, oh uh, yeah uh, you, the you ultimate can, fantasy you is hugging your neighbor in the game and you can yeah. uh, you know hug, you, hug you, can, you can get within two meters of someone <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then again I'm just is. describing VR chat again yeah <laughs> I wonder if there's like more money in like trying to figure out what the next thing is rather than like the next thing 
big thing and the next big <laughs> thing as in just like scamming business people like oh my research concludes that the next big thing is this give me money the next yeah. big <laughs> it's gonna be blockchain ai neural network games oh exactly but like i am convinced that some company somewhere on this planet is currently like setting up servers and like core gameplay mechanics and stuff in a way that enables them to clone the next big thing extremely quickly so they can be the first mm. like proper clone i'm 100 percent sure well, I mean, someone got happens. like 10 million dollars to do that that already happens on mobile a lot though like there's studios that are just there basically to copy games as soon as they can yeah and then the like i saw it just doing as much like default art as possible <laughs> oh so yeah scary. For whatever comes next, I think like, it actually if happened. Of, uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, uh, imagine if all of that like art would be in the public domain in like five years. We could make weird shit. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> it would be cool. <laughs> but uh, what what I was gonna say is it like actually recently happened with uh, Kenny's uh, new game, w- which was being released, or I don't think it was actually oh, yeah. releasing on mobile even, but it was like this. Uh, the game where you control things with like remote controls mm-hmm. and it's just like a very obvious clone on uh android or ios ios very quickly after the idea went public yeah i mentioned that in my io games video too people just will rip off games and try to make like something that looks multiplayer out of it and yeah. get super rich that's like the yeah. whole business of like it's, video it's games basically that's like... all they do right search engine develop search like google development where you're like oh this term gets googled a lot this is my game now <laughs> <laughs> what does get searched a lot hang on let's see google trends corona <laughs> oh, yeah. corona oh so people want beer all right wait is corona beer a thing where you are uh yeah yeah it's internationally shit beer. okay <laughs> 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 well let's see we got football American football, World Cup, Taylor Swift, and Kim Kardashian. So if we can make a game that uses all of that, we'd be very popular right now. And then there's also In, Fortnite, Pho, but Ramen, only... and Soba, and Cupcake. So what we're doing mm. is we're having uh, Taylor Swift versus Kim Kardashian and the They're playing uh, football. Fortnite American Football <laughs> World Cup. Cupcakes. World Cupcake. World, World Cupcake. cupcake. That's, that's, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> that's that's called synergy if you combine two search terms into one. <laughs> I don't know. Do we have any more questions? I think that's all. I think that's it. Yeah. It's been going better. for a while. Yeah. Well, uh, thanks for joining. Do you have anything you want to promote, Josh? Yeah. I make games. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your time. Nah, I don't know. Like, uh, whatever. Marketing isn't real. Buy Quamp. Buy Quamp. Buy Quamp. Buy Quamp. Buy Quamp. Is it Quamp or Quamp? Is it not... how it's pronounced? Yeah, that's pretty good, yeah. <laughs> I but thought you gonna... pronounced like a Q without a U. I thought you would just pronounce it as a K, like Comp. Yeah, whatever. It doesn't matter. Like, it's a game on the internet. Like, nobody's going to talk about it in real life. It's cool. Like, <laughs> It's, I've I, talked I, I about it in real life. There, there, there's this, there's this trend that I like notice strong, like the strongest is probably you, Mrs. Is, is where you make stuff that makes sense if you type it out, but if you pronounce it, it just is whatever. <laughs> like uh-huh. Nif, one, one of the OG like Tick Source developers, Niflas, also has this. Where like a lot of his games are unpronounceable, <laughs> um, but make a lot of sense like visually when you look at them on the screen. That's another interesting thing. Wait, who is this? Uh, Niflas. Niflas. Made a lot, like, Ur- Urnog Unlimited. Again, hard to pronounce. Oh, yeah, yeah. Unlimited. Anyway, Ur- I think people should, uh, should oh, check out yeah. Wombat's game, Quamp, because yeah. it looks hot. It is uh, cool. something I am probably going to be actually proud of. I'm really excited nice. to finish it. Like, I, I just got, I think, the second to last batch of sound effects, and there's only one single asset missing, and only a few levels to redesign. Like, the menu is almost done. It's, it's, wow. Oh, nice. Wow. Exciting. Yeah. Exciting. Yeah. 
it's gonna make no money on Steam, and then on <laughs> consoles, people are just gonna buy it without playing it ever. <laughs> That's how you make games that are just ten minutes long, right? <laughs> so that yeah, people actually yeah, play I mean, them. I think you don't get through a certification with something like that, but it is the way uh, to make a lot of games and put them on consoles right now. And that, of course, yeah. is what works. So everyone's flooding consoles, so it's not going to work like, yeah. soon. Yeah. yeah. So I have to be fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I remember hearing when the Twitch or Switch first opened up for indie devs, everyone just started flooding because there was like our chance, you know, to get in and kind and of works. Get, like, get our game seen. Yeah. I, got, I don't think I can share those numbers, but we released the game on Steam um, like last year, and then we released it on Switch this year, and we sold like in one month like three times as much copies for double the price mm-hmm. um, yeah. as we did in that whole year. In like it, it's it's there's really no proportion. So if you're a game developer, get on the Switch mm-hmm. quick because uh, <laughs> it's gonna run out. It's just so much harder though, because oh. you have to like, if you've designed a mouse for your game, then it's like, now how do I yeah. do it with a joystick or whatever? That, that's that's actually why I uh, like. That's actually something I consider with all of my games now. Mm-hmm. It's like, how easy is this to port to consoles? Mm-hmm. And if it uses yeah. a mouse, it yeah. isn't, so it doesn't get made. It's pretty crazy. Right. Uh, I guess we'll uh, call it a bat then. Yeah. Yeah. I'm there. just rambling. Yeah, <laughs> it's fun. All right, I'll end.